Hello friends, welcome back to Dental Info. The topic for today is jaw relation in complete dentures, which is a very important step during the fabrication of a complete denture. So let's get started. Before we start, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to receive a notification when we release a new video. Let's understand the different topics which will be covered under jaw relation. First is the definition of jaw relation, then the clinical significance, followed by the clinical steps and the laboratory steps. Then the types of jaw relations. Jaw relation also known as maxillomandibular relationship is defined as any spatial relationship of the maxilla to the mandible. Any one of the infinite relationships of the mandible to the maxilla. Jaw relation record is defined as a registration of any positional relationship of the mandible relative to the maxilla. Now let's discuss the clinical significance of jaw relation. First is comfort. It is very important that the established jaw relation is comfortable to the patient especially while he performs various functions like mastication, speech, swallowing, etc. Incorrect registration of the jaw relation results in discomfort to the patient. Next is aesthetics. Incorrect recording of the maxillomandibular relationship affects the facial aesthetics. Mm -hmm. Correct recording of the lip fullness, the labial and buccal fullness, midline, overjet, overbite, the high lip line, the low lip line, vertical relationship affect overall aesthetics of a patient. Next is phonetics. The occlusal rims fabricated while recording the maxillomandibular relationship act as a guide for teeth arrangement. Correctly fabricated occlusal rims ensure correct positioning of the teeth, thereby improving the patient's phonetics. Then next is functional efficiency. It is very important that the denture after fabrication provides for mastication, speech and swallowing. A correctly recorded jaw relation ensures correctly fabricated dentures ensuring functional efficiency. Next is structural balance. The recorded jaw relation should ensure a complete structural balance. This includes the correct recording of the orientation, vertical and horizontal relation. The correct recording of the condyle in relation to the mandibular fossa and the temporal bone is extremely important to ensure correct functioning of the temporomandibular joint and the related muscles. Coming to the clinical steps involved in the fabrication of complete denture, the first step is the diagnosis and treatment planning. We need to make a note of the intraoral findings and the extraoral findings. In case of a previous denture, the mistakes present in the previous denture should be noted. Expectations of the patient should be known. The next step is the making of primary impression. This is a very important step since it forms the foundation for the fabrication of a functionally successful complete denture. Correct selection of tray allows for a correct impression, made using the correct functional movements. The next step is the making of final impression. The primary cast made from the primary impression helps in final impression making. Green stick is used generally for border molding. The wash impression is then made using zinc oxide eugenol impression material. After the final impression is made, master casts are made for recording the jaw relation. After correctly recording the jaw relation, 
The casts are mounted on the articulator. Then teeth arrangement is done. The type of occlusal scheme suitable for the patient is decided. To know more about occlusion in complete dentures, you can watch our video on occlusion in complete denture. After teeth arrangement is the try-in followed by the fabrication of the complete denture. So today we are discussing about the jaw relation in complete dentures. Now let's discuss the laboratory procedures to be performed after the master cast is poured. The first step is the fabrication of record bees using autopolymerizing resin. After the record bases are fabricated, occlusal rims are made on the record bases. The record bases with occlusal rims are then dried intraorally. It is important to adjust the rim correctly according to the desired labial fullness and visibility. So, the labial fullness and height of the rim should be adjusted. The lip is normally supported by the alveolar process and teeth, which at this stage are represented by the base and rim of the record block. Therefore, the labial surface should be cut back or added to until a natural and pleasing position of the upper lip is obtained. The occlusal rim should be adjusted vertically until it represents the amount of anterior teeth intended to show below the lips at rest. The average adult shows about 3 mm of upper central incisors when the lips are at rest, but there are many variations. For example, a greater length of tooth than normal may be shown by the patient who has a short upper lip. And lesser length of anterior teeth than normal may be shown if the patient has a long upper lip. In most old people, owing to adhesion of natural teeth and some loss of tone of the orbicularis oris muscle, the tooth visibility may be less. Coming to the anterior plane of the maxillary arch, generally the plane to which the anterior teeth should be set and to which the rim should be trimmed is parallel to an imaginary line joining the pupils of the eyes, also known as the interpupillary line. A fox plane is used to determine if the plane is parallel to the interpupillary line. In case of the mandibular arch, the plane of the occlusal rim should be at the level of the lower lip. Coming to the anterior posterior plane in the maxillary arch, this plane indicates the position of occlusal surfaces of posterior teeth and is obtained in conjunction of the anterior plane. The rim is trimmed parallel to the allotrigus line, an imaginary line running from the external auditory meatus or trigus of the ear to the lower border of the ala of the nose. In case of the mandibular arch, the plane of the occlusal rim should be up to the level of two-thirds the height of retromolar pad. There are few guidelines which need to be followed during the process of jaw relation recording. Firstly, the midline needs to be marked. 
In the normal natural dentition, the upper central incisors have their mesial surfaces in contact with an imaginary vertical line, which bisects the face, and for aesthetic reasons, it is desirable that the artificial teeth should occupy the same position. This vertical line can be drawn from the center of the eyebrows to the center of the chin or immediately below the center of the philtrum to the chin or immediately below the center of the labial tubercles. Next is the high lip line. This is the line just in contact with the lower border of the upper lip by smiling or laughing. It is marked on the labial surface of the rim and indicates the amount of denture which may be seen while smiling or laughing. It helps assist the determination of the length of teeth needed. Next are the canine lines. These mark the corners of the mouth when the lips are relaxed and are supposed to coincide with the tips of the canine teeth. These lines give some indication of the width of the anterior six teeth. Now let's start with the different types of jaw relations. First is the orientation jaw relation. Then the vertical jaw relation. And third is the horizontal jaw relation. Under horizontal jaw relation, there are two types centric relation and eccentric relation. Today we will discuss about orientation jaw relation. Vertical jaw relation and centric relation will be covered in our next video. So starting with orientation jaw relation. This is the first jaw relation to be recorded. It establishes the relationship of the mandible to the base of the skull or cranium. Basically it establishes the angle or tilt of the maxilla in the three reference planes that is anterior posteriorly, laterally and vertically. The mandible moves against a fixed maxilla and to accurately reproduce the mandibular movements, it is necessary to establish and record the tilt of the maxilla. To record the angulation of the maxilla, a plane should be formed with at least two posterior reference points and one anterior reference point. The center of condylar rotation corresponds to the two posterior reference points necessary for the formation of a reference plane for the maxilla. The third reference point lies anteriorly in the maxilla, may be in the form of infraorbital notch or mesium. The instrument that is used to record the center of the condylar rotation along with the third reference point, thereby forming a plane to record the orientation relationship of the maxilla to the cranium, is called as facebook. A facebook is made up of different parts. The first is the U-shaped metallic frame. The U-shaped metallic frame to which all other components of facebook are attached. It extends from one side of the face to the other. The next part are the condylar rods. These are two metal extensions fitted on either side of the U-shaped frame. The calibrations on either side of the condylar rod are equalized to the center of the face bow and then they are locked. These are two metal extensions fitted on either side of the U-shaped frame. The calibrations on either side of the condylar rod are equalized to the center of the face bow and then they are locked. The next part is the bite fork. It is a U-shaped rod which is attached to the maxillary occlusal rim while recording the orientation jaw relation. It is attached to the frame with the help of a metal rod called the stem. Sometimes the bite fork is attached to the occlusal surface of the occlusal rim with the help of impression compound. This is done in order to preserve the occlusal rim. The next part is the locking device. 
the locking device mainly helps to attach the u-shaped frame to the other parts like the bite fork and the orbital pointer the next part is the orbital pointer pin it helps in marking the anterior reference point it is adjusted after marking the anterior reference point on the patient this enables the transfer of the third reference point Now let's discuss the different types of face bows. There are two main types. First is the kinematic face bow and second is the arbitrary face bow. Arbitrary face bow is of two types, the fascia type and the earpiece type. First let's understand the kinematic face bow. It is a face bow with adjustable caliper ends used to locate the transverse horizontal axis of the mandible. It locates the exact center of condylar rotation or transverse horizontal axis. It requires the use of fully adjustable articulator. The condylar rods are first positioned arbitrarily at a point 13 mm anterior to the auditory meatus on the canto trigal line. The patient is instructed to make opening and closing movements in centric relation. The opening should not be greater than 12 mm as then the condyle will begin to translate instead of rotating. The position of the condylar rod is shifted around the arbitrary mark until it shows pure rotation. This is the center of condylar rotation. This point is marked, the condylar rods are locked. The face bow assembly is removed and mounted on an appropriate articulator. The next type is the arbitrary face bow. This type of face bow is used to relate the maxillary cast using average anatomic landmarks to estimate the position of the transverse horizontal axis. In the fascia type of face bow, the center of condylar rotation is arbitrarily marked as 13 mm anterior to the trigus of the ear on a line drawn from the outer canthus of the eye to the trigus of the ear. The condylar rods of the face bow are placed on this point. The next type of arbitrary face bow is the earpiece face bow. In this type, unlike the fascia type of face bow, the external auditory meatus is considered as the reference point to determine the center of condylar rotation. So let's quickly summarize the use of a face bow. As discussed earlier, the face bow transfers the tilt of the maxilla to the articulator so that the mandibular movements in relation to the cranium it correctly reproduced in the articulator. This record helps in the fabrication of a successful prosthesis with least interferences and with most comfort and functional efficiency. It also helps in producing good aesthetics. Now let's revise what we have learned till now about jaw relation record by solving some multiple choice questions. Question 1. Orientation records are transferred by Option A. Gothic arch tracing Option B. Facebook record Option C. Dual impression technique Option D, none of the above. Question 2. Before an arbitrary face bow transfer record, the dentist must determine Option A, physiologic rest position Option B, inclination of each condyle Option C, axial center of rotation of condyle Option D. Kinematic axis of rotation of condyle. Question 3. The maxillary anterior plane should be parallel to 
ऑप्शन ए इंटरप्यूपलरी लाइन ऑप्शन बी एलाट्राइगस लाइन ऑप्शन सी मिड लाइन ऑप्शन डी नन ऑफ दी आबा Take your time to answer these questions. You can later verify your answers by checking the description section below. Please like, comment and subscribe to this channel to learn about various dental topics. You can also ask us any other questions or give suggestions in the comment section below.